In this video, I'm going to be testing my Python skills by going through a bunch of interactive Python quizzes. I'm probably going to start easy and then move into some more challenging ones as I do consider myself to be pretty good at Python. Uh, so I'm hoping I'm not going to be proven wrong here by these quizzes. Now, these quizzes are available on the real Python website. This is an awesome website, by the way. I use this all of the time. It has really great content and I'll leave the link to them in the description. I thought this would be cool, though, because you guys can compare yourself to me and see um, how many you get correct versus myself. And then maybe I can explain some more complicated questions. With that said, I do quickly want to mention that right now at the time of filming, I'm about 5000 subscribers away from 1 million on YouTube. So if you're watching this, please leave a subscribe uh, and help me get to 1 million. I would really appreciate that. And now I am actually going to ask you a quiz question before we proceed uh, and go through all of these interactive quizzes. So the question is the following. What is the sponsor of this video? And you're going to have to watch the next minute to find that out. Before we get started, I need to thank Mailgun for sponsoring this video. Mailgun lets you send transactional or bulk emails effortlessly, regardless of your business use case. Mailgun's ease of use, world-class support, and powerful APIs empower smart development teams to reach customers at scale. Mailgun can even prevent fake signups, remove invalid email addresses, and overall improve your email delivery and conversion rates. Mailgun controls the entire email lifecycle from pre-deployment through delivery of over 240 billion emails per year for companies like DHL, Wikipedia, Lyft, and Microsoft. Better yet, Mailgun's send time optimization automatically finds the ideal time to send emails for each individual recipient to improve engagement. Thank you again to Mailgun for sponsoring this video. Make sure to try Mailgun today by using my link mailgun.com slash tech with Tim. All right, so hopefully you guys appreciate I'm being a bit creative with the sponsorship segues. At least I'm trying to. Let's just dive in, though, and get into this interactive quiz. I'm going to start with basic data types in Python. Now, I don't have any idea how hard these quizzes are. This sounds like it's going to be really easy, like what's a Boolean, what's a string, what's an integer, but it could be a lot more complicated. So let, let's see here. OK, let's start the quiz. Uh, in Python 3, the maximum value for an integer is 2 to the 63 minus 1. OK, already I have no idea if this is correct or not. Um, I don't even know if there is a maximum value in Python. I've never seen like a maximum. So my feeling is to go false because I don't think there's a maximum, but there also would have to be right um, Two to the 63 minus one. Seems like that would be the maximum if there was one. But I think I'm just going to go with false because, again, I, I have no idea what it would be. So let's just let's go false. Uh, OK, apparently that was correct. So let's see what it says here. Uh, limit was removed in Python 3. It means there is no defined limit, but the amount of available address space on your machine. OK. Um, how would you express the hexadecimal value A5 as a base 16 integer constant? OK, so I believe that the hexadecimal in Python is 0x. I think you lead 0x. Now, A5, I think I can literally just write A5. Um, yeah, I yeah, I think that's fine. Let's try that. OK, let's go. Nice. Next, uh, how would you express the constant floating point value 3.2 times 10 to the negative 12 in Python? Uh, so you have to do something with like E here. So it'd be 3.2 asterisk and then this would be 10 E negative 12. Um, that's what I think it is, but I don't know if you do the E like this. So let's try that. And was I close? Um, oh, it, you just you don't need the 10. OK, I mean, I think that was pretty good. I had the E. So if I had just removed the 10, it would have worked. I also didn't need the uh, what do you call it? Yeah, OK, I got it. makes sense. OK, I'm I'm fine with that one. Let's go next. Uh, which of the following are valid ways to specify the string literal foo bar in Python? OK, that's not going to be good because we're going to have two separate strings. This will work because you're escaping that. Although, oh, no, it wants that character. Yeah, OK, so that will work. This will work because you're wrapping the single quote in double quotes. This will not work. This, I believe, will work. So let's see if that's correct. And there we go. Nice. OK, next question. Write an expression for a literal or a string literal consisting of the following ASCII characters. Horizontal tab character, new line character, the character with hexadecimal value 7E. Oh, my God. OK. A string literal. So let's go horizontal tab, I believe, is slash T. Uh, the new line character, I believe, is slash N. It might be slash R here, but I think slash N is is correct. And then the hexadecimal value. I have no idea what this would be, but I would imagine I would escape the zero 
Z0X7E. Um, I, I don't know how to do the hex at all. I, I think these are correct for the first two, but I have no clue what the hex decimal is. So let's just try that. Okay, of course that's incorrect. Uh, what is it saying the answer is here? Okay, so I didn't need the zero. I just need to escape the X7E. And there we go. Okay, you know what? I, I can live with that. I've never had to embed a hexadecimal character in a string before, so I'm fine with that. Okay, next question. Uh, consider the statement print, and then you have R, foo, backslash, backslash, bar, backslash, N, baz. Okay, which of the following is the correct REPL output? Oh my god. Uh, I don't even know what the R does when it, when it leads that. Um... I have no clue what this would be. The backslash N should move it down though. So I think that's it. Really? Okay. So R, I guess, means ignore the backslash. Yeah. Okay. R, I guess, means you ignore any escape characters. That's that's very strange. I've never seen that before. Okay. Next question. This is supposed to be basic data types. These are really hard for basic data types. Uh, which of the following is not a Python built-in function? Okay. So I know map. I know round. I know is instance repper. I think it's diff. Okay. Correct. All right, guys, that was a little bit rough. Um, uh, I'm not going to lie to you here. That was <laughs> a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Let me go back to the main page and see if we can do another quiz and we'll see how hard that one is. All right, guys, so I'm back to the main page here. I'm not going to lie. That was really hard. I thought these were going to be easier, especially because it says basic data types. And that was like really obscure and like specific stuff that you're probably never going to have to know. Um, I was looking through here. There's a few um, Python dictionaries looks decent. I clicked on it just to see Python conditional statements. Let's just do conditional statements here and see nine questions. Um, well, let's go through it. In a Python program, a control structure defines a program specific data structure, manages the input and output of control characters, directs the order of execution, dictates what happens. Okay, directs the order of execution. That one was an easier one. Which of the following if statements will not execute successfully? Uh, this will not execute because it does not have indentation. This might, that will work, that will work, that will work. Okay, so it's gotta be that one. Very good. Next, uh, what signifies the end of a statement block or suite in Python? Statement block or suite, a line that is indented less than the previous line, not end, not a comment, not that. So yeah, it's gonna be that. Okay, much easier, much, much easier already. Uh, although I don't wanna speak too soon. What is the output of the following code snippet? For bar in, and this is foo bar baz. Okay, this is weird. I think this is gonna be, oh, if bar, sorry, I thought I said far. If bar is in foo, so it is in there, so this will print. So we'll get one, two, well, that's not gonna work, so we'll just get one, two, four. Uh, I believe that's correct. All right, much, much easier. Uh, suppose you have the valid, or the following variables defined, write a Python if else statement to assign the smaller of a and b to the variable m. Okay. Uh, the smaller of a and b uh write an if else statement i'm a little bit confused here because these are predefined values that ask me to write an if statement write a python if else statement to assign the smaller of a and b to the variable m i mean could i not just do the min function though okay so i'm gonna say if a is less than b then m is equal to a else m is equal to b I mean, let's double check this. Assign the smaller of A and B to the variable M. Okay, so A, okay. Yeah, okay, good. That was kind of a weird question again. Uh, the following if L if else statement will raise a key error exception. Uh, if D, yes, yeah, so if D is not in the dictionary, then it will raise an exception. You have to use dot get, so that's true. What? If D does not refer to an invalid key, but the expression in that L if clause never oh sir i didn't even consider the fact that it's not going to execute okay that makes sense i should have read the whole thing okay next question that's why you don't rush i guess on the quizzes which of the following are valid if else statements in python assuming x and y are defined properly uh if x is less than y if x is greater than 10 print foo i believe that will actually be valid i think that works um this no i don't think this wait if this do that else this this, like, I think this might work, but I'm not sure if that's exactly the syntax on, on how you write that. Uh, the semicolons, I think, actually work as well. Again, again, I'm not quite sure here. This, I don't think, will work because of the indentation. Are all of these correct? 
which the following yeah again these are really weird i've never really seen it written this way i think that will work if another if and then the print that looks like it might work this one with the semicolons i think will work i think if you add semicolons that's fine this one i don't think this works because the else has a colon i don't think you need a colon after the else um and this one here looks like it might work so let's try this okay so this one doesn't actually work you can't do two if statements but these ones are good again very obscure stuff here um but that's fine okay I'll move on to the next question all right what is the value of this expression a plus x if one two three dot is digit else y plus b yeah see you don't actually have the um what do you call it the colon here right the else doesn't have the colon okay so a plus x if one two three Okay, what is the value of this expression? Yeah, so that is a digit, otherwise this, so I think it's just AX, right? I don't know why it would be anything else than that. Okay, very good. Uh, suppose you have two variables X and Y defined, write a stub if statement to evaluate whether X is less than Y. The statement should not do anything, even if the condition is true. Write a stub if statement. I imagine the stub if statement is it's saying like, just write an inline if statement that doesn't do anything at all. Um, I don't know what it means by stub though. I Let's get a hint here hint use the past ah gotcha okay that makes sense now so suppose you have x and y register if x is less than y if x less than y then just pass is that what they mean okay that was yeah all right complete quiz and check results okay 770 percent i think one of the questions i got wrong i should have got correct the other one i just didn't know with the if statement much better all right so i think i'm going to end it here I don't know if you guys found this entertaining or not if you or if you were able to follow along again i found this pretty challenging these are some really obscure kind of strange python questions uh, i know that is python for you but a lot of this stuff i've genuinely never seen in my like seven or eight years of writing code in python you know what take what you want from that but uh yeah that that's my thoughts on this quiz some very very strange questions especially for titles like conditional statements uh and whatnot although i guess now i know and i've learned a few things with that said, though, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a like. If you want to see more videos like this, then let me know in the comments down below. Help me get to a million subscribers by hitting that subscribe button if you are not already. And I will see you in the next YouTube video.